Welcome to this episode of OC Now. I'm your host, Brianna Greenup, and today we are going to be covering news surrounding Orange County and Saddleback College. OC Now reporter Andrea Moore took a deeper look into a local Orange County nonprofit doing something truly remarkable for the homeless community. Homelessness is a large epidemic that only seems to be getting worse. According to the National Alliance to End Homelessness, there are more than 560,000 people who are homeless on a given night in the United States. Operation Helping Hands is a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering our youth and younger generations to give back by providing hygiene items and basic necessities to the homeless. I sat down with the founder and president, Kim Valentine, to find out more and see why she started this great foundation. I really wanted to sort of like lead by example with respect to my children. I had um, three kids and my youngest one had sort of grown up in Orange County and had sort of wanted for very little. And I wanted him to be exposed to more, and I wanted him to realize that not everyone had the same privileges that he had. But she was not expecting what happened next. He just looked up at me and said, so we're going to go find more people, right? At that moment, she knew this was something she had to continue, and Operation Helping Hands was born. They went from 50 brown paper bags to 1,000 backpacks for each assembly event. During these events, volunteers show up to fill backpacks with useful items, then they go out to cities throughout Southern California to distribute the backpacks to the homeless. The kind of sad thing is that every single time we do it, even though we do have a thousand backpacks, we always feel like we need more. Um, we rarely ever feel like we, you know, we run out of backpacks before we run out of homeless people. Kim and the many volunteers are truly doing something special here in Southern California. It makes me feel sad that I can't do more. It makes, I mean, a backpack's good and it, it's something that they need, but I can't even imagine what it would be like to be living life like this. Homelessness often receives a negative stigma from people who do not understand what brings a person to living on the streets. Kim opened up with me to share her personal experience. I was homeless when I was 14. Um, and that was really just a matter of circumstance. And so I know what that's like. And so it's a very personal and real thing for me. And so um, I, I re recognize that homelessness is not what people think. I mean, it can be. There certainly are people who make bad decisions and, and absolutely there, you know, there, there are, there's that. But there are often times people who have had bad set of circumstances and things just didn't go the way that the rest of the world perceives that they should go. And they didn't have the same opportunities that everybody else had. And sometimes it just takes the loss of a job or an illness or you just never know what it might be. Nothing in life is ever promised or guaranteed. So Operation Helping Hands are doing their part to help people who are struggling with homelessness. For more information on how to help, check out the Operation Helping Hands Facebook page. California made history this past week by being the first of 50 states to raise minimum wage to $15. Governor Brown signed the bill earlier this month, gradually increasing minimum wage from $10 to $10.50 in 2017, increasing to $15 in 2022. Now, are you looking for something old and borrowed? Reporter Mia Agravia Dor checks out Driving Miss Daisy Vintage Market here at Saddleback. The Driving Miss Daisy Vintage Market is held every second Sunday of the month at the Saddleback parking lot near the BGS building. Founders Charlene and Shelley created the event over a year and a half ago. You know, Orange County needed a great vintage food market, <laughs> and we looked at other areas around this, you know, surrounding cities and decided that Saddleback College was a great fit. We gathered up, uh, it took about a few months, but we gathered up about 30 vendors and we started our food market. Here. I want to encourage the young people like yourself, you know, <laughs> and, the, and the students here at Saddleback to come out and uh, really see what good, old, you know, upcycled, recycled, you know, we want, that we want your green. generation to know that you can mix this, with, you can mix the new with the old. Daisy is an old camper and is owned by Charlene and Shelley and is the icon of the vintage market. She's our, our mascot, she's our flagship, she's, she's Daisy. Our brand. <laughs> <laughs> That's also where our driving Miss Daisy came from. Uh -huh. 
uh -huh. you know? And they have places that they have tables for uh, items that are a dollar <laughs> for any items on the table. So that's um, how does it it's like we live in San Diego, program. so it's a nice, easy drive. Okay. We think and, it's really smart um, that they don't charge um, admit um, entrance fee or and parking fee like a lot of places do. So people come here and they have money that they can buy stuff. So. Climate is great, mm -hmm. you know, and it's uh, it's just nice. Everybody's nice. We're just thinking about you know how it's low crime. And, uh -huh. You don't have people ripping you off, and it's just very nice. Okay, cool. It's just kind of a fun deal the way they set it up. It's very well organized and they have music and uh, old cars and other things that are entertaining and uh, nice food and you know it's just kind of a fun atmosphere versus a lot of them that are more you know people are just out cutthroat. <laughs> Do it for the I mean I don't want to not lose money but I it's not my main objective here. It's, it's just kind of a fun and retired and I have a lot of stuff to get rid of, and this is a good uh, event. From Mission Viejo, Mia Agavidor, OC News Team. The Vintage Market takes place in the BGS parking lot the second Sunday of every month. Saddleback College's Emeritus Institute offers classes catering to older adults in Southern Orange County. Here's more on the story. Now with the new library, we have a dedicated space. We have uh, really beautiful walls, and so now it's developed into more of really flat work on the wall and painting and drawing more so than it was before, which involves ceramic, glass, fabric, all the different arts of the Emeritus Institute. It's a way for people to really expand on uh, arts and creativity that maybe in their job life or their working life they never were able to pursue ever. I get so many people that are, are here, here with a second career, um, you know, after 45, after 50. Yeah. They just, and they blossom. Is it, it's, it's academic, it is um, beautifully put together, it touches on every area of arts, um, drama, um, we have theater program, we have writing programs, we have um, political science programs, we have bird watching. Every part of that program gives people an opportunity to interact and to be creative and to really think outside the box and, and, and think outside their own lives. When I uh, became full-time faculty 15 years ago, the art program was a different thing altogether. It was more of a community ed based, in other words, there was um, very specific uh, uh, projects that went with each class. Now the classes are constructed to be really academic thing. So we're a mini college within the college. The artwork will be on display until May. Federal income taxes are usually due April 15th, but this year procrastinators are getting an extra weekend. The IRS is giving most states, including California, until Monday, April 18th to file in honor of a little-known Washington, D.C. Emancipation Day at the nation's capital. Those who are not prepared to file their taxes by the deadline must submit an extension by the 18th, giving up to an additional six months to file. You must pay an estimation of what is owed by the 18th, or penalties up to 25% of your unpaid taxes will be charged. If you're looking to join a club on campus, check out one of Saddleback's oldest clubs around, Anime Club. Reporter Natalie Lozano has the story. That's the most valuable treasure you could find. Anime is broadly used to refer to Japanese animation. It has become a popular branding between Japanese cartoons and cartoons from the rest of the world. I'm Sabrina German. I'm co-president of the Anime Club. Yeah. And basically what we do is we bring all these people together that have similar interests and we kind of just enjoy them together. We watch anime, we discuss it. We um, have events with it and we just kind of um, like connecting everybody together. Anime Club is one of the oldest clubs at Saddleback Campus. They meet every Wednesday from 2 to 5 at the Student Services Center room 211. Our main thing is we watch uh, new episodes every week. Just the first episode of a new series, trying to get members interested into new animes, discover new animes that you might like. It's really fun. Who's next? That Who's next? The club holds special events for their members. We have an end of semester party uh -huh. where we have like trivia and we have fan made stuff and people can vote on who did the best stuff. The club welcomes students to join and discuss trending series and their own favorites. Everyone is super friendly, super welcoming. And I mean, we all get to enjoy the one thing that we really love, anime. It's great. 
For further information, go to the club page on saddleback.edu. This is Natalie Lozano reporting for OC News. Visit saddleback.edu to learn more. Our next story takes us to a grassroots organization that empowers our local Southern Orange County community. Let's take a look. One Man's Trash is another person's treasure. We Are San Juan hosted their first free market and art workshop event in Southern Orange County. They invited several creative directors to give various art lessons to local children of the community. No buying, trading, or selling. Everything is free. Bring items you don't need and take what you want. The whole point of the free market is essentially that it's free, right? So you donate what you don't need or want anymore, and then people, you know, who can use them, take them. And it's the annual Salas Day Parade for um, San Juan Capistrano. And here in San Juan, we have a gang injunction, and we are coming up to its 10-year anniversary. We wanted to have a event where we can come together as a community, especially because you know in those past 10 years, there's you know there's a lot of hurt that our community um, experiences. We wanted to have an event where we can come together and just kind of heal, right? Um, create some good art, especially you know because we really believe that art is very healing. So we are San Juan. It's a grassroots organization based here from um, in San Juan Capistrano. We actually started out as a school group at Saddleback College, um, a student group. But the thing is, is that we were actually doing more uh, community organizing rather than on campus. So we decided to go ahead and create our own organization where we can work directly within our community. Before we created our mission statement, we went around and we talked to our community and asked them like, what was it that concerned them the most? Um, and so, you know, what, one of the biggest ones was Border Patrol, just because there's been a lot of Border Patrol terrorization as far as I can remember. You know, I've lived here all my life and that just has always been something that people have been so fearful of. And the other thing is gangs. And so when we dive into the issue, we did uh, realize that there was a gang injunction. That we are, you know, uh, trying to educate our community about is that the gang injunctions don't help us, they harm us. We try to have, you know, like know your rights workshops for our community, for like if, you know, somebody were to encounter Border Patrol or somebody were to be stopped by police. So we kind of try to, uh, we've done a couple and it's something that we'll probably continue doing in the future. Uh, we currently also, as a group, we offer English classes um, and it's literally like in the same neighborhood but just around like the corner. Hopefully this, you know, we will be continue having these kind of uh, art workshops and free markets because it, it looked like you know a lot of people really did take the idea of the free market so hopefully the community next time we we have one the community will totally be on board with like uh, coming out and donating um, so we really look forward to basically doing more of those kind of community events we feel like you as a community to grow we all have to grow together for more information on we are san juan and future schedule events visit facebook.com slash we are san juan for oc now i'm stacy herrera now from San Juan Capistrano, we head over to Dana Point, where members of the community gathered to support Saddleback College students. The Saddleback College Foundation held its 16th annual gala at the Laguna Cliffs Marriott Resort and Spa. The night was filled with food, music, games, and most importantly, the silent and live auctions. The goal of the event was to raise money and support students at the college. One of these students being 2015 alumna and Val Victorian Lydia Natalu. I look at Saddleback College, you don't just give me a degree, but literally change the trajectory of my life. Uh, not having a family here, Saddleback College became family to me. Saddleback ASG president has taken steps to help students like Natalie. You know, a lot of students struggle with finances. The student government has taken initiatives like the food drive I mentioned today in my speech and the holiday toy drive to help some of those Saddleback families. This would be President Todd Burnett's seventh gala, none like he's ever seen. Frankly. Uh, the gala today is nothing like it was seven years ago. First and foremost, we've raised uh, uh, about three or four times the amount of money. Uh, the amount of money net basis is uh, probably five times more, uh, so that's it. The participants that attend, I think it was about 150 people seven years ago. Now we're well over 500 people, uh, so uh, a very big difference. This is Brianna Greenup with OC Now. Before we end our show today, we at OC Now would like to offer our condolences to the families of two Saddleback students who recently passed away. 21-year-old Dorian Wyatt died in a car accident on Ortega Highway, and 24-year-old Tree Nguyen lost his year-long battle with cancer. 
both of these students will be dearly missed. And that's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to check us out on our website at ocnewsteam.com or find us on Facebook. I'm your host, Brianna Greenup, and that's all for today on OC Now.